Hello, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are we all doing today? And I hope we are getting ready for the New York session, which will be starting in about two hours from now. Um, let's confirm that we are good to go this morning. Um, can you hear me clearly? Can you see my screen? If you can do, please, I will appreciate that you type in hi in the comment section. This will give me a positive feedback that we are good to go this morning. So I would like to see some comment, please. I would like to see some feedbacks. Let's see what we have here in the comment section. Okay, Marcy, good morning. Thank you. Um, 8818, I'm not sure I understand what you mean there. <laughs> okay, 838, good morning. Thank you very much. Um, Ranjit, how are you doing this morning? Good morning. Valerie, how are you, Valerie? <laughs> hey, Carrie, good morning. Thank you very, very much. So, I, with this, um, have a dozen of comments i would want to see this as a positive confirmation that we are good to go this morning and so, so excited to welcome you all to yet another promising session on the extra and speed live my name is sharif daramola and for the next one hour as usual i will be your host as we go into the financial markets dissect the current chart from a technical standpoint in anticipation of the New York session today. And for those who are joining us for the first time, I'm so excited to welcome you guys on board as um, our family gets bigger. So what we simply do here on a daily basis is to gather here as a community um, in anticipation of the New York session. So we have series of financial instrument that we have been monitoring since the beginning of the week and for this week we have the us hall the usd jpy the gpp usd the xau usd and the us tech 100 so we have the spares which we have been monitoring since the beginning of the week so we are going to be looking at how to manage our existing positions and at the same time get ready for the new york session so we do this on a daily basis 10 a.m utc 11 a.m west african time as we get prepared for the new day so once again you are welcome and i understand it's cool it will be a little bit overwhelming at first since this is your first time being with us but i assure you that with time you will get to understand how this works and you will be able to use whatever information you have gathered here to make your own individual decision so with that being said here let's dive right into the business for today and you all know what we do whenever we want to start the day we want to keep tabs with the fundamental aspect of the market and we are going to be diving right into the economic calendar so what we do on the economy what we look out for on the economic calendars are um, high impact events that will be affecting any of the um currencies that we is on our watch list that is the us dollar the pound sterling or the japanese yen and for today thursday april 27 the us bureau of economics analysis will be releasing its first estimate of the first quarter of the gross domestic product which is forecasted to show an annualized expansion of two percent as against the previous data of 2.6 percent growth and what is the gdp the gdp shows the monetary value of all the goods services and structures produced within the u.s economy in the last quarter so what this simply means that we are going to be seeing um the gross measure of market activities uh, within the space of the last three months which actually gives us an insight into the pace at which the country's economy is growing or decreasing so this is a very high impact event that everyone will be looking forward to so we have a consensus projection of about two percent and also the federal reserve also will be looking at this will be monitoring um, this economic data too as well as they get prepared for the 
interest rate decision which is coming up next week and we have been seeing um, a choppy situation in the market which is a reflection of the anticipation of that interest rate decision coming up next week so these are things that we are going to be taking into consideration while we continue to monitor price action ahead of the gdp for today so with that being said let's dive right into the chat and as usual the first commodity we are going to be looking at this morning is the u.s oil and in fact i'm so excited to let you know that the U.S. oil has happened to be the most profitable trade for us for this week as we were able to be part of another bearish move um, in the last 24 hours, giving us about um, uh, close to 300 pips there about on this one as we rode the move all the way to the downside. And before we go into the details of what the current structure is looking like, let's quickly run through how the week has started for us on the US oil. So the week started on a bearish note as we saw here on Monday uh, during the early hours of the week we saw our price action started at around the $77.65 level price action dropped into the $77.69 area here giving us a beautiful flat channel at the first, um, I think first eight to 10 hours of the week, we saw this whole situation where price was trapped within that area. And you all know what we look out for whenever price action falls within this kind of structure. We want to see price action do either a breakout of the resistant line of that flat channel or the support line of the flat channel for trading opportunity. And with our stop orders placed at both ends, we had our first buy position for the week triggered as soon as price action broke out of the $77.65 level. Then we also added another position to our existing trade as we discussed on Monday that we are going to be having another buy stop order above the $78 mark, which happens to be our key level for the week. So we had this whole situation running on Monday right above the $77.65 level where we had the first position move about 140 pips and the second position move about 100 pips before the bearish momentum began on Tuesday. And remember that um, we acknowledge the fact that when this bullish momentum continues that we are going to see how price action will be reacting to that trend line that was broken um, during the later part of last week as we might likely see price action retest that structure to inside a bearish move to the downside which is exactly what happened and since then price action has been finding lower lows and lower highs and during our live session yesterday what we simply did here was to acknowledge the fact that price action has been bearish um, since Tuesday and what we did during the live session yesterday was to acknowledge this by connecting the series of lower highs and when we did we had this bearish trend line which was supposed to be our yardstick for trading activity yesterday so as long as price action remained below the trend line we agreed that we continue to look out for selling opportunities but if price action breaks the trend line definitely we are going to be looking out for buying opportunities but what happened yesterday was quite interesting and remember we also added this um, structure into our parameters for monitoring price action that demand zone here had the $77.69 level and we also agreed here that if price action ever breaks down that structure we are going to be in for a selling move and look at what happened here a couple of hours into the New York session we saw the breakdown of that structure and if we had missed that opportunity the market was so kind that it gave us another opportunity to be part of that move as we saw price action come back to do a retest of that structure to incite that strong bearish move to the downside hereby breaking down retesting that demand zone for the first time in five days so at this case scenario here, it was quite a very um, jolly bearish ride for us on the US oil for yesterday and congrats to everyone who has been part of this bearish move. 
And remember at the beginning, at the, I think a couple of days ago, we also acknowledged the potentials of sellers here where we said um, we are going to be um, looking for our TP target zone within the $75 level and the $70.50 level, which was as a result of taking into consideration the impulsive move um, that started um, last month. So when we consider this impulsive move, what we did was to use our Fibonacci retracement tool, run it through the previous impulse leg, and we aimed at an area between the 50 and the 78.6% of the previous impulse leg, which gave us this whole uh, potential TP target for the sellers. And at the same time, it's going to be serving as a potential buy zone if we begin to see buy pressure or a reversal pattern begin to evolve within this old area. So right now, price action is right within our TP target zone and some of us will have taken our profit actually. And for those who still have a position running, trying to maximize this um, sell position we had, um, well, we want to be moving our stop loss accordingly right now to lock in some profit as we don't want to lose out on whatever we had made so far. So if we are going to be locking in some profit at this point, where are we going to be moving our stop loss to secure this current position? And from the look of things right now, I will be suggesting that we move all stop losses anywhere right above the $74.60 level, giving room for price action to breed at this point. And going into the New York session today, what is going to be our plans? And for those who had missed out on this opportunity, um, do we still have another opportunity to be part of a trend continuation to the downside? Or are we going to be getting ready to be part of a reversal pattern or a retracement move at any point in time? Now, before we go into the details here, the first thing I would like to say here as to recall our memory is regarding this bearish trend line, which we um, identified after connecting the series of lower highs. So there are two things that could happen from this area. As you can see, we have seen the situation here where price action since testing the $74 level, a very strong psychological area, considering the round figure of that price, we have seen how price action has been trapped within a channel just between the $74 level and the $74.65 area to give us a clue into the indecision in this current market. And this might be as a result of the anticipation of the GDP coming up today. So most of the time when we are anticipating a major event like that, we, we always see uh, price action go into consolidation phase as major key players in the market will probably step aside waiting for data to give a clue into where price action might likely be going after which um, funds is injected into the market give, bringing more liquidity to move price um, in that particular direction so there are two things that we can look out for based on this current structure the first one which is um, very very in line with um, the current structure is that this could turn out to be a trend continuation pattern considering the previous impulsive move that brought us to this point. So if we consider the impulsive move that brought us into this level, this might likely turn out to be a trend continuation pattern where the breakdown of structure will incite another wave of bearish momentum to the downside. So that is one scenario that we could look out for at this point. And another thing that we could look out for going into the New York session today is price action breaking out of the $74.65 level to incite a retracement of that previous impulse leg where we shall be looking forward to see how price action will be reacting to the trend line and the $77.69 level that was broken during the course of yesterday's trading session to decide if this is going to turn out to be a trend continuation or probably a bullish momentum after a breakout of that structure happens. Now, in order to have a better perspective into what is really, really going on here, I would like us to scale down into the 15 minutes time frame where I was able to identify a simple setup that we are going to be using 
to guide our trading activity for today. So with that being said here, let's dive right into the 15 minutes time frame as we look at that simple setup which we shall be using for today. So right now we are back within the 15 minutes time frame and we are going to be focusing on that channel which we have been observing here in the last um, 11 hours I, I think, 11, 15 hours I think. So this is the channel we have here and we we have this all acknowledged at the beginning. So we have the resistant line of the channel at the $74.65 level. Then we have the support line here, which happens to be the lowest point price action has ever been this week, making it a support line for this channel. Then I also have a key level, which we are going to be using to guide our trading activity for today. And in fact, this key level slice this channel into equal apps as you can see here and one thing we have observed since the early hours of today is the fact that as soon as price action climb back above that key level we have seen some level of buying presence in this market so we can see that if despite sellers trying to break through the structures at every point in time we have been seeing our buyers had continued to negate all selling attempts in this market so we have that key level going to be serving as our yardstick for trading activity for today and what this simply means is that if price action remains above that trend line sorry above that key level um reversal pattern above that structure then we might anticipate a bullish momentum where we could actually join early enough even before the breakout of that resistance point at the 74 dollar 65 cent level happens however if the trend line gets broke if the key level gets broken to the downside then we want to be looking out for selling opportunity and in addition to this key level that we have here is this bullish trend line i was able to spot after connecting the series of higher lows um, in the last 15 hours as you can see right here now it shares a very beautiful confluence with that key level at the $74.35 level where um, I was able to put my step, sell stop order just right below the $74.35 level with the hopes that price action will continue to the downside here and we might be seeing something like a breakdown retest of the structure to incite a bearish move to the downside where a further breakdown of the $74 level will be a very beautiful and significant signal to go all in on a bearish move to the downside so this is how we are going to be selling the us oil for today so like i said i already have a sell stop order triggered at this point so i hope price action will continue as expected and we should be having a stop loss somewhere above the 74 dollar 65 cent level which will be dovetailing to about 25 to 30 pips thereabouts and since we already have a sell position running, we have moved our stop loss. This whole situation here, if it continues to the downside, then we are going to be trying as much as possible to milk out as much profit as possible from this single move that we have been witnessing in the last 24 hours. So I'm turning towards a bearish momentum on this one and hoping that price action will continue to the downside from this area. Then if that happens and the further breakdown of the $74 level happens, then this whole structure we have here would have turned out to be a trend continuation pattern and it would be a very good move to add more position to our existing trade here. So these are my views here on the US oil for today. It's a very simple setup we have here. So we shall be focusing on this current structure on the 15 minutes time frame to guide our moves going forward. If you do have any questions regarding what I just explained so far, feel free to drop your inquiries in the comment section and I will be willing to be of help. Can786, good morning. Um, Zago, good morning to you. Dino, you are welcome. Um, I am. Um, I don't think I get what you're saying there, 2208, because um, I don't know if that is... I don't know what the language is anyways. All right, so in the absence of no questions, I want to assume we're on the same page and I hope you've screenshotted my screen so that you can use it as a reference point when you're about to make your individual decision on this 
um, commodity. So moving on right now, we are going to be going into the next option for today, which is the US tech. Now on the US tech, we have been having a choppy situation so far this week on the US tech as we, though we had some buy positions, we had some sell positions as well, but um, this position hasn't lasted um, for a long time before we were taken out of the position at every point in time. So let's see what happened since the beginning of the week on the US tech so that we can have a background knowledge of where we are coming from as we plan to project what our expectations will be like um, for the New York session today. So the first thing that happened this week was the fact that price has been very bearish as we saw our price had continued to trade below that key level we identified at the beginning of the week which is situated at the $13,000 level. And since the, since the beginning of this week, we have seen a situation where price had consistently um, respected that, trend, that line where sellers had come in immediately at the right time to negate all bullish attempts in this market. So we saw the week started with a situation where we had the resistant line here, had it 12,985. And then we have this um, support line here at 12,930. And with this whole setup identified at the beginning of the week, we were looking forward to either a breakdown or breakout of that structure for a trading opportunity. And one thing we said here is if price action breaks out, we have a buy stop order above that structure. And if price action breaks down, we are not having a sell stop. Instead, we want to wait for further confirmation, which will come in the form of a retest of structure before we join. And the reason why we were waiting for a confirmation was simply because of the strong demand zone here as we need to see um, presence of sellers in this market giving us a clue of how um, they are gradually gaining some momentum in that market. So we had a buy position initially at first but this move did not last long so after price moved about uh, 60 pips in our favor uh, we moved our stop loss accordingly locked in some profit but unfortunately for the buyers, we were taken out of that position and on Tuesday, we begin to see signs that selling momentum is gradually coming in. So we sold here at the breakdown of that demand zone here and price action moved on that first position on Tuesday with about 170 pips. Then we had a second position triggered at the below the 12,800 moving about 80 pips thereabouts before we saw this bullish momentum which took us out of this position. And during our live session yesterday, we acknowledged the fact that um, where were we during the live session? I think we were around here during the live session yesterday where we saw this bearish move all the way to the downside. And we said if price action breaks down, retest the structure, we will be hint to add more position. But unfortunately, we were taken out of that position. And since then, we have been witnessing this old chopper situation, which could be attributed to the um, economic event we are expecting today, that is the GDP. And also, there is this um, speculation across the market as regards the interest rate decision, which is coming up next week, May 3rd. And majority are thinking that the dollar, sorry, the interest rate will be increase by 25 basis point which will definitely favor um, a bullish traction in the dollar so there are still a doubt in the here hence we have been seeing this whole consolidation phase happen and in fact it is going on on all the major pairs that we have been monitoring um, so far this week so at this point in time it is quite reasonable that we remain very very patient at this particular point in time before jumping into any trade here now, before we go into the details of what to look out for today, I would like us to um, scale up into the daily time frame. Let's see what is really happening from an holistic point of view. And this also will favor um, those who are not part of our live session prior to this one. So in that regard, we shall be scaling up into the daily time frame where we want to see things from an holistic point of view and then use whatever structure we identified here to project what our expectation would be like for today. Now, what I will be doing here on the daily time frame is to focus on trading activities since the beginning of this year. 
and we can see how we had a very strong demand zone at the 10,500 level. This was where price action started this year. And since then, price action has been finding higher highs and higher lows in this market. And to further emphasize the strength of the buyers in this market, we have this um, ascending channel figured out after we connected the series of higher highs, giving us a resistant line of that ascending channel. And then we also connected the series of higher lows here, giving us the support line of the ascending channel. Now, things got a little bit more interesting during the beginning of this month as we saw price action break out of that key level at the 12,800 mark, which happens to be the first time price action will be breaking out of the structure in the last uh, five to six months in this market. As you can see, this area has been a strong selling niche. At every point in time, buyers try to break out of the structure. We saw our sellers negated that bullish attempt. Now, at the beginning of this month, let me zoom in so that we can see things more clearly. So at the beginning of this month of April, we saw the breakout of the 12,800 mark for the first time. Um, and we were hoping that this move will continue or will incite a very strong bullish momentum to the upside. But if you look at what has been happening in the last two to three weeks in this market, you will see that the bullish momentum appeared to be reducing as we can see how the $13,220 mark area has continued to negate every attempt by the buyers to break out of that structure. And with this whole situation we have here, we have a very um, insightful uh, flat channel here, which further emphasized the indecision in this market as price action has continued to juxtapose between the $13,220 and the 12,800 since the beginning of this month, giving us a clue of an indecision. And so we need to be very, very careful here in order not to miss out on the potential trading opportunity. So this week so far, we have been on a bearish momentum actually, which at one point in time broke down the 12,800, which is a sign that sellers have the tendency of breaking down that structure. So for me, for this week, I'm still thinking that bearish momentum is still a very possible future in this market as we look forward to price action breaking down to 12,800. And our duty here today is to see how we can catch that move earlier than the breakdown happens so that we can maximize the profit we want to be making on this one. So when we scale down to the lower time frame here, we want to look out for structures that will support a bearish momentum so that we can catch that move right in time. But another thing we should also take into consideration here is the fact that remember this level has been a very strong buying niche in the past and we are not going to um, be blind to the potentials of the buyers too as well. So we're also going to be looking out for structures that we want to see in this market that will project and give us the confidence to be able to buy the US tech. So with that being said here, let's scale back down into the one hour time frame. As you all know right now, we are well equipped with the information we have on the daily time frame to make a well informed decision when we scale down to the lower time frame. Now scaling down into the one hour time frame, we want to see our price action has been reacting to that our important key level had a 12,800. So the first thing I will do here, if we look at the structure and considering our price action had been playing out um, since last week, at least in the last seven, seven, eight days now in this market, it is quite obvious that price action has been bearish. And when we connected the series of lower highs since last week, Tuesday, you will see that we have this bearish trend line. So this trend line was figured out at the beginning of the week and we agreed that we will continue to use this trend line as our yardstick for trading activity. And what this simply means is that if price action still remains below the trend line, we would have no choice than to look out for selling opportunities in this market. The only reason we'll be buying the US tech in this market is if price action ever breaks out of that trend line to the upside and we see buy pressure resume above that structure, this is when we can be thinking of buying the US tech for um, for this week. And in fact, if you remember, we have the 12,800 mark, which is our key level 
on the daily time frame. So I would like to acknowledge that structure here. So where is the 12,800 at this point? Okay, the 12,800 mark is around here. So just right below that demand zone, this is where the 12,800 is. So let's acknowledge that quickly so that we can have a visual understanding of what we are talking about here. So we have the 12,800 right below the, that demand zone there. So I will take this one out and then we acknowledge this one. Oh, 12,800 is still, still so, okay, this 12,800 here, sorry about that. This is the 12,800 here, so it's still far away. So this is the structure we saw on the daily time frame. So I will just readjust this one back into that demand zone, which is at the 12,890. All right, sorry for the mix up there. So here we go. Now, what we are going to be doing today is this. So as long as price action remains below the bearish trend line, we would have no choice than to look out for selling opportunities. Now, what do we want to see on this chart that will make us to sell the US tech for today? Well, um, like, I, like we said, as long as price remains below the 12,890, which is also below the trend line, and if we go to as far back as the beginning of this month, of this week rather, where we have this demand zone sitting at the 12,890 here, and we saw the breakdown of that demand zone happen on Tuesday. And from a technical standpoint, whenever we have a breakdown of structure, we normally expect price to come back through a retest of that level to incite a trend continuation. So personally, I want to see price action drop back below that demand zone which is at exactly the 12,890. And remember, we are not jumping in right away with a sell stop order as we still need some confirmation to happen. So immediately price action drops below the 12,890. We shall scale down to our lower time frame, like our 10 minutes, five minutes time frame to look out for, for the confirmation to join the move. So what we want to see on the lower time frame is a retest of structure where we start seeing signs that buyers are finding it difficult to break above the 12,890. And this will reflect on the chart in the form of selling pressure like this, breakdown retest, then we could join that decline to the downside. Then a further breakdown of the 12,800, which is our key level um, on the daily time frame, will definitely welcome more positions in that regard. And the 12,720, which happens to be the lowest point price action has been uh, for this week also, a breakdown retest of that level too, will be an opportunity to add more position to our existing trade. So I hope that we'll be on standby to catch this move when it happens. Now, in as much as we are looking out for selling opportunities here, that if price action stays below the 12,890, we look out for selling opportunities, we cannot ignore the potentials of the buyers in this market as well. Now, if we take into consideration what happened yesterday after the, sorry, on Tuesday after the breakdown of that demand zone, you would have noticed that price action had transitioned to find higher lows in this market, though we are yet to find a higher high, we found a higher low in this market. Uh, this could build up into a situation where a bullish momentum breaks out of that trend line. And you all know that whenever such breaks out happen, we'll still need some confirmation to give us a clue or insight into the buildup of the bullish momentum in this market. This market is a bearish momentum, at least in the last one week it has been bearish. We really need a confirmation that will give us the clue that buyers have come to stay in this market. And this will reflect on the chart as a retracement back into structure, retesting either the trend line or the 12,890, which happens to be the demand zone at the beginning of the week to give us a confirmation to buy the US tech for today. So you can see how important the 12,890 level is for us for today. It demarcates the buyers and the selling pressure in this market at this point. So anywhere above the key level at the 12,890 would have broken out of the trend line to the upside, hereby um, giving us a clue 
that the trend line may no longer be strong enough to negate any bullish momentum in this market and if that happens by pressure above the trend line then we would have no choice than to look out for buying opportunity but if a breakdown of the neckline of this 12,890 happens then we are back within the seller's territory looking out for selling pressure on our lower time frame to be part of the bearish move to the downside so let's be on standby to catch any of this opportunity as the 12,890 is going to be our center of focus during the New York session today. So if you have any questions um, regarding what I just explained so far, feel free to drop your inquiries in the comment section. So with that being said here, I will be moving on to the next pair and trust me, I will be checking the comment section from time to time to see if there are any inquiries for me. So the next pair we are going to be looking at is the GBP USD. And in fact, on the GEP USD, it is quite interesting that we have a very choppy situation in the last 72 hours in the market. And you all know I explained earlier why this is happening, as there is a lot of um, fundamental situations around the U.S. economy that has been has been causing this market influx in the last couple of days now, from the um, expectation of the interest rate decision to the GDP data coming in later today and to the um, dent in the banking sector um, in the US as we, we get to learn two days ago that the Federal First Republic Bank um, lost over a hundred billion dollars in withdrawal in deposits to as customers lost faith in the regional banks moving funds to the national banks and this caused also a drop in the share price of the of the First Republic Bank by 27% um, a couple of days ago. So this is a dent into the US market too as well. And this has caused a lot of choppy situation around the market in the last couple of days. And it could be a little bit annoying, but at this point we need some level of patience to be able to dissect and decipher what our next line of action will be. So at the beginning of the week, we had an opportunity to buy actually. We bought here, which gave us about 60 pips before the bearish momentum began. And we also had an opportunity to sell and buy at one point in time. And at this point, we are caught within this whole situation here. Now, one thing you would observe around the structure here is the fact that um, as soon as price gets into the 1.25060 level and the 1.24850, we have been witnessing some selling pressure around this area though it has been quite bullish since the beginning of the week as you can see we have higher lows in this market as you can see here but one interesting thing about this whole structure is that we are yet to find a higher high and whenever price action gets into the structure we see our sellers jump in to take over the market dropping price back to the downside the same thing also happened here on Wednesday, that is yesterday, and during the early hours of today, we are beginning to see the same old thing happen at this point. And in addition to this old structure here, remember we had this bullish trend line at the beginning of the week, which was actually supposed to be guiding our bullish momentum. And we saw the breakdown of the structure happen on Tuesday. And from a technical standpoint, whenever we have a breakdown of a structure like this, we expect that at one point in time, price action will come back, retest that structure like it has been doing in the last 24 hours to inside another wave of bearish momentum. And because of this whole situation here, I'm look, I'm turning towards a bearish move. Now, let me replay what I'm, what is making me sell the GBP USD1 is the sell pressure we've been noticing around this area since the beginning of the week. That is one. Then secondly, the breakdown retest of the structure as well is another thing that is making me lean towards a bearish move and thirdly is this old reversal pattern that is gradually forming in which is finally confirmed here so we have the highest point here price dropped into the 1.24550 level which happens to be our key level at the beginning of the week we saw our price was unable to break the previous high hereby giving us a lower high and with this whole situation here, what do you see? A potential reversal pattern in the form of a double top structure. And you all know what we look out for whenever we have this kind of setup. We want to have a neckline area, which we shall be using as a platform to validate this reversal pattern. And at the same time, the breakdown of that neckline will be triggering a sell position in this market. 
And look at what happened here. Coincidentally, the neckline shares a beautiful confluence with that key level that we identified at the beginning of the week at the 1.24550 level. Now you can see how the 1.24550 level has been a major determinant of price action in the last few weeks. And the same thing is happening this week here. And since it's going to be our key level, below the structure definitely will be a signal for us to sell. And I was able to identify this simple setup here on the much more lower time frame. And this was what I was able to spool out on the, I think the 30 minutes time frame, I guess. And this was what I was able to spool out this morning, which made me to sell the JPUSD as of this morning. And this is what I was able to identify. So we have this reversal pattern. So I have the neckline here at a 1.24600 level, which has been triggered right now. And we have some bullish momentum, which could be um, as, a, as a result of a retracement of this impulsive move that broke the structure. So if you had missed out on that sell position at the breakdown of the 1.246, then we could still wait and see how price would react as there is a chance that price could still come back to do a retest of the structure or this trend line here to incite a trend continuation to the downside. So these are things that we are going to be looking at today. So if you had missed out on this one, there's no need to panic as there is still a chance that price will still come back into the structure or this trend line here to give us an opportunity to sell. So for those who have joined this move, well done to you. And for those who have the sell position, we are having a stop loss on around above the 1.24850 level, which will be dovetailing to approximately 25 pips stop loss in this market. So going into the New York session today, we already have a structure that we shall be using to guide our selling opportunity in this market. And that is the first one is the 1.2460 level. And the second one is the bearish trend line after we connected the series of lower highs in this market, giving us this trend line that you can see on your screen right now. Now that we've talked about the bearish expectation in this market, what happens if price action climbs up, find higher highs in this market? Are we going to miss out on that bullish move if that's going to happen? No. So what happens if price action takes us out of our sell position and we cite a breakout of this trend line? Well, for me, a breakout of this trend line will now be a signal that we might be in for a bullish momentum. So if we are taken out of our sell position and price action breaks out of the trend line, then it would have broken out this resistant line here at the 1.24850, where a breakout of that structure, we are not jumping in right away as we still need some confirmation to happen. So as soon as the breakout happens, we scale down to a much more lower time frame, like the five minutes time frame or your 10 minutes time frame to look out for buying pressure above the structure before we join the trend continuation to the upside. So this is what we want to see in this market that will suggest that we are going to be buying the GBP USD for today. So I will advise you screenshot my screen so that you can use the simple setup as your guide um, during the New York session today. So let's see how price action plays out in the next, um, we shall be coming here tomorrow to review how well this pair has been doing and let's uh, move on to the next pair. But if you have any question anyways, feel free to drop your inquiries in the comment section. So I will be moving on to the next pair right now, which is the XAU USD. On the XAU USD, this is what we have been witnessing here since the beginning of the week. Price has been a little bit choppy, just like it is on the JP USD as well, as we have a situation where price had continued to range between the $2,000 MAC and the $1,985. So we, we bought yesterday, I think two days ago, we bought two days ago. And as at yesterday, I told us all to move our stop loss to secure the buy position. And I told us that we are going to be having a buy stop order above the $2,000 MAC level, where we are going to be adding more buy position to our existing trade. And in fact, during, during the durable goods order um, publication, Yesterday, we saw the breakout of the $2,000 MAC as price action moved significantly over 94 pips, 90 pips in our, in our favor before the bearish move came in. And I hope as soon as price action moved in our favor, you moved your stop loss accordingly to lock in some profit. And if you had done so, 
uh, you would have been taken out with a small profit or at a worst case scenario of break even. Now, with this whole situation we have here, um, what is going to be our plans as we get uh, prepared for the New York session today? Well, if we take an holistic view of what has been happening on the one hour time frame here, you will agree that since the beginning of the week, price action has been a little bit bullish. We have been seeing our price action had consistently found higher lows in this market, hereby giving us this bullish trend line which has been our guide since the beginning of this week. And for those who are taking advantage of this buy position here yesterday, well done to you for being on standby to have caught that move. As I personally missed this move, I was not available on the screen during the later part of the New York session yesterday. But if you are in that buy position and you still have a buy position running, I would advise that you move your stop loss right now to above the 1995 to secure the scoring position as there is a high chance that selling pressure could come in at any point in time. And the reason why I'm saying selling pressure could come in at any point in time is simply because of what has been happening in this market since um, the beginning of this week. Now, if we look at this old structure, that is um, this structure here, uh, you will notice that since the beginning of the week, we saw how the $2,000 mark has been a very strong selling niche in this market, as every attempt by the buyers to break out of the structure has been met with strong resistance from the sellers. Though we had a strong breakout of the structure here yesterday, but as you can see, it was immediately negated as we saw sellers push price to the downside. And this is a sign that sellers are still very, very strong in this market and we need to be very careful buying around this area unless we see a significant confirmation that says otherwise. Now look at what has been happening here since the early hours of today. We have been seeing selling pressure again around the $2,000 mark. Now, to buy or sell at this point needs a little bit more um, um, dissection. So, in that regard, I was able to identify a simple setup that we can use to guide our trading activity for today. And this was what I was able to bring up. Hold on a second. I think I brought this up. Okay. So, this was what I was able to find on the 15 minutes time frame, which will be our guide for today. Now look at this old structure we identified here on the 15 minutes time frame. So I was able to spot this. So first of all, we have this trend line, uh, which has been a strong resistant line at one point before the breakout of that trend line happened um, during the early hours of today. And as you can see here, price is trading right above that trend line at this point. Then another interesting thing that happened is as soon as price got into the $2,002 mark, just close to our key level at the $2,000 area, we have been witnessing some selling pressure around that area, giving me a very beautiful resistant line to guide my trading activity. Then we have a support line here at the $1,998 where I will be looking forward to um, using that area also to guide my selling opportunity. So right now we have a flat channel sitting on a trend line and you all know what we look out for whenever we have this kind of simple setup. We want to see price action either break out of the resistant line for buying opportunity or break down the support line for selling opportunity. And during the early hours of today, we've already seen price action break down the structure to the downside. As you can see here, and we really hopes that a retest of structure will happen. So we saw price come back into the structure and in fact broke it to the upside. And since price action came back into that $2,000 mark, we have been seeing selling pressure again in the last one, um, in the last 45 minutes. Now, uh, we need to acknowledge that $2,000 mark too as well. So if we bring out our line chart and then look at this old structure so we have the two thousand dollar mark here somewhere around here let's give this a golden color and then we have a two thousand and then we have this a golden line so we have it right here so i'll extend this out a little bit so to emphasize it's important so you can see we have been witnessing selling pressure here in the last term um, in the last um, 45 minutes thereabouts, as you can see. And if this continues, 
are in such a way that it comes back to break down the trend line, then at this point, I want to get ready to sell. But we are not going to be jumping right away as we still need some confirmation to happen for us to feel confident to be part of that move. So I would want to see price action do a retest of the trend line or the $2,000 MAC selling pressure below the structure my lower time frame, then I could join had the breakdown of a reversal pattern right there. Then we look out for more opportunities to add more position to our existing trade if price action breaks down the 1998 so with a sell stop order below that structure we are in to be part of that move to the downside now that is how we are going to be selling the xau usd for today however if price action continues to the upside and then we see a breakout of the 2002 dollar mac then at this point we are going to be getting ready to buy and if this happens, we scale down to like 5 minutes time frame, look out for retest of structure. It could in fact come back into the trend line here. But the most important thing we want to be seeing around this area is a reversal pattern that will give us the confidence to be part of a trend continuation to the upside. So as soon as a breakout of that $2,002 mark happens, then we get ready to buy. Then we wait for a retest of structure, which could still drop to as far as $2,000 mark which also shares a confluence with that bullish trend line to incite the trend continuation to the upside. So this is what we are going to be using to guide our trading activity for today. So it's a simple setup we have here. You might want to screenshot my screen so that you can use it as a reference point when you're about to make your individual decision. So we have sell breakdown retest. Like I said, let me come again on this one. Sell breakdown retest. We join the decline sell stop order below the 1998 then we can join that decline to the downside and if the opposite happens instead price action breaks out of the 2002 then we get prepared to buy we wait for a retest of structure which might likely go to as far as 2000 dollar mac before a buy pressure resume to inside the trend continuation to the upside so this is what we are going to be using today ensure you be on standby screenshot my screen so that you can use it as a reference point when you're about to make your individual decision. So on this note, we shall be moving on to the last pair for today. If you have questions, let me know right in the comment section. So the last pair we are going to be treating for today is the USD JPY. And in fact, I was able to identify an interesting setup here, which I'm still expecting um, it to transform into what I think will happen at this point. Now, let's talk about how things has been for us on the US JPY since the beginning of this week. Now, if you look at what has been happening here, um, remember, um, we have this resistant line at the beginning of the week here at the 134.480, where buyers have found it difficult to even come close to. Then we also had the support line here at the 133.900 level, which actually guided our bearish momentum on Tuesday and since then we have been selling the USD JPY where price action has broken down that key level we identified on the daily time frame at the 133.800. Now for the sake of those who are not part of our live session proud to this one, um, let's quickly run through the daily time frame so that we can see how important the 133.800 is so that you can have a background knowledge of how we got to this point and the reason why we are making whatever decision we are making at this area. Now, scaling up into the daily time frame, this is what we were able to look at at the beginning of the week. We understand the fact that we had a very huge accumulation phase around above the 131.00 level, which has lasted for about 11 to 12 months, over a year now. And this was a sign that buyers are very, very strong anywhere above the 131. And this was further emphasized later on in the month of February this year, when we saw the breakout of the trend line here. And from a technical standpoint, whenever we have price action break out a key structure like this, we expect that price will come back, do a retest of that trend line. And we'll look at what happened here. A retest also shares a confluence with that strong by niche at the 131.00 level where price action appeared to have transitioned into a reversal pattern. And you know what we do here whenever we find a re potential reversal pattern, the next thing we want to be doing is to identify a neckline which we are going to be using 
as a platform to validate the reversal pattern. So if a breakout of the neckline happened, this validates the reversal pattern for us. Now, this is where the 133.800 level, which I showed you on the one hour time frame, comes in. So we had a neckline at the 133.800 prior to the beginning of last week's trading session, after which we were part of a bullish momentum when the breakout of that structure happened, giving us about 140 pips before price action went into a selling mode, taking us out of the position. Now, we expect that when a breakout of a neckline happens, price action is likely going to come back, retest the structure to incite a trend continuation. But till this moment, we are yet to see that kind of momentum happen here. Even the breakout of the neckline wasn't that massive to give us a clue into the strength of the buyers in this market. However, there is another structure here, which is the bullish trend line, which is also going to be serving as an guide for us today. As you can see, we have a trend line and in the last 24 hours, we can see how price action still remains just right around that trend line, giving us a clue that the trend line may still have that capacity to continue to reject any selling pressure in this market. And if we look at the nature of the candle that closed yesterday, it closed in the form of a hammer candle, which from a technical standpoint is a sign that reveals the presence of bias at this point. So above the 133.800 still looks very reasonable to buy the USD JPY. So we could have a buy stop order above the 133.800 in anticipation of joining that trend continuation to the upside. And this is likely going to be coming in um, closer to the economic event that is the GDP coming up later today or after the GDP, we might likely see a bullish traction in that regard. However, if selling pressure continues and on our lower time frame, we continue to see sellers negate any bullish attempt there, then this will negate the um, reversal pattern we projected earlier and we would have no choice than to start looking out for selling opportunities in this market. So you can see how important the 133.800 is and it is very important for us to scale down to a much more lower time frame to see how price action will be reacting to that 133.800 um, during the um, on our one hour time frame to see how price action will react during the New York session today to make a decision. So let's go back into the one hour time frame since we have digested how important that structure is. So scaling back down into the one hour time frame, this was what I was able to find from a technical standpoint. Now, first of all, let's acknowledge the fact that price action has been bearish since the beginning of the week. And if we bring out our line chart, uh, we have this um, trend line after connecting um, the series of in fact, I would like to do some readjustment to the trend line here. So to capture, okay. So look at the trend line now. We have a trend line after connecting the series of lower highs and we have something like this. So look at it. Uh, we have the touch here. We have a touch here and it appears we have another touch here. And another thing about this whole structure is that I also spotted a potential inverse head and shoulder pattern after citing this impulsive move into this point where this places our left shoulder we have the head here we have the right shoulder and then we have the neckline again had the 133.800 you can see how coincidentally the neckline of our potential reversal pattern on the daily time frame shares a beautiful confluence with the reversal pattern we are identifying here on the one hour time frame so with this whole structure here, I'm of the opinion that we could have a breakout of the 133.800 level, which if the breakout of the 133.800 level happens today, then this would also have broken out of that trend line. And at this point, this might likely be a sign that the trend line is no longer strong enough to negate um, to negate all bullish momentum in this market. And if that happens, we want to be looking out for buying opportunities above the structure here. So we could have a buy stop order that above that level. And if you are a conscious trader, you might want to wait for a retest of structure, giving you further confirmation that buying momentum is gradually gaining um, some strength at that point before joining that move to the upside.
So this is how we are going to be looking out for buying opportunity on the USD JPY today. So anywhere above the 133.800, which also shares a confluence with our trend line, will be giving us that opportunity to buy the USD JPY for today. However, if the opposite happens and price action, as we have seen in the last couple of hours now, we saw our selling pressure resumed again along the trend line. Um, price action might likely be respecting that trend line one more time to inside another wave of bearish momentum. But we need to be very, very cautious here. As you can see, out the 133.500 level has been a very strong demand zone, at least since um, in the last 48, 72 hours in this market. So if a breakdown of the 133.500 level happens, I would suggest that we remain patient. We are not jumping right in. We want to see a confirmation happen, which will definitely come in the form of a retest of either the 133.500 or the retest of the trend line but the most important structure like you all know we look out for is a reversal pattern, lower highs giving us a further confirmation that selling momentum is gradually coming in, then we can be part of the move to the downside right below the 133.500 level. So this is how we are going to be selling the USD JPY today and we also have a structure here at the 133.00 area which could also give us more opportunity to sell if price action ever breaks down that level. So this is what we are going to be looking at for today. So our center of focus today is right within the 133.800 and the 133.500 where a consolidation phase could happen before either the breakout to the upside for buying opportunity happens or the breakdown to the downside for selling opportunities will happen. So that is that on the USD JPY for today and it's on this note I would like to call it a day here. If you have any questions let me know in the comment section. I would wait for about 10 to 15 seconds to see if there are any before I call it a day. Eight to eight. good morning. 942 I see your comment. Good morning. 799. Good morning. Uh, Jeremy, good morning to you. All right. So in the absence of no questions, I want to assume we're on the same page. I hope you screenshotted my screen so that you can use it as a reference point when you're about to make your individual decision. So on this note, I wish you best of luck during the New York session. Remember, we are, we are anticipating the high impact event, the GJP coming up in about an hour from now. Ensure all existing positions is well protected. Move your stop loss accordingly, lock in some profit as we might likely see some volatility coming anytime soon. Do have a wonderful evening, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you same time tomorrow, 10 a.m. UTC. 11 a.m. West African time as we come here again to review how well this pairs has been doing and at the same time get ready for the last trading day of the week. And for my newcomers out there, I'm so glad you were around till the end of the session. I hope you were able to gain one or two things in this um, in this session and I promise you you'll get to gain more if you be part of us tomorrow as we prepare for the last trading day of the week. Do have a wonderful evening everyone. Bye-bye.